Well, now to our ongoing series, Running Dry, Lake Powell slowly drying up and the feds keep pouring more water in to keep it at a usable level. Team 12's William Pitts takes us to Lake Powell, where some people are pushing for a radical idea that saves the water while not saving the lake. Lake Powell has more shoreline than the entire west coast of the United States. You can explore for hours in any direction, find hidden passages and beaches. But the lake is now at its lowest level ever. Those passages are going dry. Beaches don't even come close to the water. Lake Powell was just a canyon before it filled with water, so rocks like this were submerged for a while until the water level started dropping. Now hazards like this are coming to the surface. The canyon still exists. It's the reason the lake snakes through small passages for miles in all directions. The water feeds the dam and the power plant, but the water level is lower than it's ever been before. Power generation is down and could possibly stop in the coming years. So instead of waiting for more rocks to come to the surface and the power plant to stop, what if the lake just didn't exist. This dam was built to harness excess water, and there is no more excess water. Eric Balkin with the Glen Canyon Institute thinks that might be the solution. We need to start thinking about life beyond Lake Powell. Right now, the Bureau of Reclamation is releasing water from lakes upstream to help refill Lake Powell. It's also cutting the amount of water it releases from the lake to go downstream. The Bureau of Reclamation is going to extreme measures to prop up this reservoir. Even with these extreme measures being taken, uh, this reservoir is still going to be running a deficit. Balkan's plan is to open all the valves at the dam and let the water out. It would go downstream and collect in Lake Mead, which would prop up that dwindling lake. And Balkan says it would probably save water since Lake Powell leaks water into the sandstone it's made out of. If you were to consolidate what water is in Lake Powell and put it into Lake Mead, you could save some water. Uh, the estimation is around 30 to 50,000 acre feet per year. Which isn't nothing. That's 10% of the water Nevada gets. And the lake would just be gone. We're reaching a point where this structure might turn into more of a liability than an asset. It sounds a little out there, except at this point, no crazy idea is really that crazy. When that idea was first being shopped, we should get rid of Glen Canyon Dam, people thought that was like a way out there notion. Because Sarah Porter with the Morrison Institute for Water Policy says all the other ideas we have to create more water are right up there with getting rid of the lake. There are lots of ideas, you know, wrangling clouds, um, towing pipeline, icebergs, I, intermittent flood water it. pipeline. Yeah, there, there are all kinds of ideas and they're all feasible from an engine, maybe not wrangling clouds, I don't know, but most of these are feasible from an engineering standpoint, but that doesn't mean that they are, that they're a good option. And there are definite downsides to getting rid of the lake. Glen Canyon Dam produces power for 5 million people. Without the dam, the power grid would need to make that up somewhere. Also, the town of Page gets its water from the lake. That would have to be solved. Balkan admits there are hurdles and opposition from a lot of sources, but the water levels continue to drop, and there's no silver bullet. Regardless of whether you are for or against Glen Canyon Dam or Lake Powell, it's been argued about for decades. It doesn't matter. These changes are happening, and we need to make the most of it. Changes that are happening whether the dam and lake exists or not. At Lake Powell, William Pitts, 12 News.